Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, Kapila Vastu Relics and Buddhist Diplomacy. Before we understand what this topic is all about, we have a gentle reminder. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS is happy to announce the launch of a new series called as Target Means 2022 and this will be live from today at 7.30 pm. The first two sessions that is today and tomorrow, it will also be available on our YouTube channel but after that this is exclusively available on the Baiju's Exam Prep application. So what is that you have to do download the application and watch these seminars watch these beautiful lectures delivered by our distinguished faculty this will be mains oriented so all the subjects with respect to the mains will be discussed as part of the target mains 2022 so please do tune in from 7 30 to 9 pm today on our youtube channel and for the rest of the sessions on our baiju's exam prep application let's get started and try and understand what is this topic all about. When we speak about Buddhist diplomacy, one of the initiatives that India has taken as part of the Buddhist diplomacy is to make sure that the cultural ideas of Buddhism is spread from India to multiple other countries. So as a tool of the Buddhist diplomacy, what has India done right now? India is planning to send some of the Buddhist relics from India to Mongolia. So four holy relics of Lord Buddha are being flown from India to Mongolia for Mongolian Buddha Purnima on June 14th. So the Mongolian Buddha Purnima is falling on 14th of June 2022. So four holy relics of Lord Buddha are being taken from India to Mongolia for display for about 11 days at the Bagastan temple within the premises of the Gandan monastery. So remember this is a tool that is being used by India to enhance the diplomacy between India and Mongolia. In order to take these relics from India to Mongolia, a 25 member delegation from the Ministry of Culture led by Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju will carry the sacred relics to Mongolia. They will be kept in Mongolia for about 11 days. Now the question is what are these relics? When we speak about relics, these are the resources, these are the historical valued resources that are valued, venerated, worshipped by number of people world over. It can be that of a saint, it can be that of a martyr. So an object that is esteemed, respected, venerated because it has an association with that particular religion is what is called as a relic. So in the present situation, the holy Buddha relics currently housed in the National Museum are known as the Kapilavastu relics since they are from a site in Bihar first discovered in 1898 which is believed to be ancient city of Kapilavastu. So what exactly happening? We have the Buddhist relics. These are being sent from India to Mongolia and these are venerated and respected and as a result as a tool of diplomacy it is being sent from India to Mongolia. Let's look at the historical background. At the age of 80 it is believed that according to the Buddhist beliefs Buddha attained salvation in Uttar Pradesh Kushinagar district and according to Mahaparani Banasuta, after his death Buddha was cremated and the ashes were divided among his followers. Originally these ashes were only to be sent to the Shakya clan but because Buddha belonged to people, Buddha belonged to humanity, other clans and kings also demanded for the body relics. In order to avoid the fighting, a Brahmin Drona divided the relics into multiple portions. So the Mala of Kushinaga cremated his body with the ceremonies befitting a universal king. His relics from the funeral pile were collected and divided into eight shares to be distributed among the Ajata Shatrus of Magadha, the Lichavis of the Vaishali, the Shakyas of Kapilavastu, the Malas of Kushinaga, the Bullis of Alakappa, the Malas of the Pava, the Koliyas of the Ramagrama and the Brahmana of the Vetadipa. These were some of the relics that were distributed amongst multiple clans in the country. Now if we speak about Ashoka, it is said that Ashoka being an ardent follower of Buddhism opened up seven of these eight stupas and collected major portion of the relics from the enshrinement 
within 84,000 stupas built by him in an effort to popularize Buddhism as well as the cult of stupa. So what exactly happened? Ashoka being the greatest follower of this religion takes up these relics and also sends it to multiple other countries as well. Then what are these Kapilavastu relics? The discovery of an inscribed casket in 1898 at the stupa site in Pipravaha near UP Siddhartha Naga helped identify the place with the ancient Kapila Vastu. The inscription of the casket slit which refers to the relics of the Buddha and his community the Sakya reads Sukiti Batinam Sa Bagin Kanam Sa Putta Dalanam Iyam Salila Nidare Badasa Bhagavate Sakyanam. This roughly translates to the shrine for relics of the Buddha, the August one is that of the Sakyas, the brethren of the distinguished one in association with their sisters and with their children and their wives. So basically, the Kapilavastu relics were identified and it was also placed in the National Museum as well. What is the significance? Why is India sending these relics from India to Mongolia? These relics which are kept in the National Museum are very significant because they are not taken out of the country but because India wants to establish that Bonner and relationship with Mongolia. A special gesture was decided to send the relic of Buddha to Mongolia. Mongolia is considered as a Buddhist nation with 53% of the population being the Buddhist. In fact, large number of Buddhist monks who also want to learn higher learning with respect to the Buddhism also visit India. They also visit India to learn more about Buddhism as well in different institutions that are present in India. And in the past, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Mongolia in 2015 was the first an Indian Prime Minister visited Mongolia and taking the relics to Mongolia right now will also help revive diplomatic ties with Mongolia as well. Added to it, we also have the cultural significance, we also have the spiritual significance, we also want to boost cultural and spiritual relationship and as a result, if India is taking these relics from India to Mongolia, this will enhance the diplomatic ties and this will further increase the cultural and the spiritual affairs. Affiliations. Though India does not have a physical border, India would now be able to have the cultural and the spiritual connect as well. The relic is also considered as an equivalent to the presence of Buddha and hence the relevance of relic is very important in enhancing the relationship between India and Mongolia. Is it the first time that relics are being transferred from India to another country? No. We also have an example in the past as well where Sri Lanka was also given these relics to celebrate some of its Buddhist festivals. As a result, the Buddhists in Mongolia are thankful to the Indian government for allowing the sacred relics of Lord Buddha and they call this particular event rare and precious as well. And it is at this particular point that the teachings of Lord Buddha are relevant even in today's times and this will guide humanity towards greater peace, harmony and prosperity. So India and Mongolia believe in peace and harmony and they want to spread the message of Lord Buddha through this particular celebration on the Buddha Purnima that is being celebrated in Mongolia on June 14th. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.